All right, everyone, I was going to uh, wait and perhaps do this tomorrow. I was also thinking about gaming, but I decided to do this uh, partially as a response. Uh, some black guy is actually hosting, uh, as we speak, Warski, uh, Based Mama, Sister Danger, some of these other people. Uh, there are a bunch of people right now. Definitely share this out. I'd love to get Medicare on board, but I don't actually know how to add him to the uh, discussion here. Uh, be a little bit of a problem. I'd like to add a bunch of people. Uh, the problem being, of course, if they don't know that it's actually going on, there's no way to do that because I think you have to have an email link, send them the link, you get them on the broadcast page, and then you have to fiddle around with a half a dozen things. And of course, uh, it's difficult because I'm also uh, right now on the actual page too where everything is live. Uh, I decided to address the Kilroy event stuff personally. Because I know that a few people have decided to go to the uh, event there, specifically because I'm going to be attending. And there's some Skyrim uh, sounds in the background, but that just makes sense because it's yeah, it's the festive time of year. Skyrim, it's cold, it's fucking snowy, so it's all good. Yeah, I would ask uh, to uh, J Wolf. I would ask Medicur on Twitter, uh, but it's uh, there's no uh, it's not necessarily true that he's going to respond. But I will actually try. Come to think of it, I'll uh, I'll try to DM him on Twitter because I'm a follower of his, and you know, I think he follows me too, if I remember correctly. So I'll send him a direct message. Yeah, <laughs> just a moment, folks. I got to send him the link. I gotta end every message with clank. So I'll try to get him aboard. Uh, and I think the uh, one that Sister Danger and the other organizers are on is still ongoing. So I, I can't bother them right now because I think they're still live. Um, let me just say this in brief. I'm still planning to go to the Kilroy event. The reason why is this, and I've explained this in brief. Several people at least are planning to go because I was planning to go, number one. Number two, I donated to the cause, so it wouldn't make sense to skip out. Number three, I was already making contingency plans to go to Phoenix uh, then because of the event. What reason would I have to pull out now? There's one exception. If it falls apart to the point where it's going to be sub-Tumblr dash con, yeah, I probably wouldn't, you know, actually show up. I'd be like, well, you know, we'll do something else. Any other situation would lead me to try to help. I, I'm not understanding, I guess, why so many people who have so much uh, to gain from free speech and so much to lose if it's denigrated. I'm not understanding why so many people take joy in the fact that the Kilroy event would be fucked up uh, or, or poorly organized or whatever they would say. I'm not quite understanding why they wouldn't try to help uh, to make it better, to make it more well organized. As far as I know, on my end, and I'm not an organizer, in full disclosure, I'm not one of the people on the inside of the organization, but you know, I'm willing to talk to the people that are, because I'm billed there as someone who's going to be showing up there. Let me say this, I would rather it go off well. You don't have to, like, uh, I know that Al Sup and I think Based Alaska and a few other people are like, well, you know, they're not friendly towards identitarianism, and I'm not really sure that that's the case, but okay, let me assume that that's the case. Identitarianism cannot exist if you do not have free speech. It's just the way that the world works. If free speech wins, if those that support it win, everybody else from the far left to the far right and everything in between, the libertarian, the authoritarians, literally everybody wins. It's just the way that it works. By the way, as far as this contract stuff goes, my understanding, and I'm 99% sure this is true, is that the contract has actually been dropped so that people who want to show up and speak do not actually need to sign a contract. That is, uh, if you're signing it, you're getting your slots. If you're not signing it, but you're still a content creator or whatever, or they've been talking to you, you can still show up and there are other slots that will be available for you to speak, or you can just show up and mill about and talk to people. I don't really care. The only reason, look, the main reason that I'm showing up is because people said, hey, I'm going to buy a ticket, I'm going to donate to this event because Sticks is going to be there. 
or in part that was one of the reasons that they decided that they wanted to go. That's the only real specific loyalty that I have. I don't have specific loyalty to the Kilroy event or to its organizers. Then though I look at who's organizing it and I see Based Mama, I have no problem with Based Mama, I've spoken with her. Uh, Sister Danger, I have no reason to doubt. Razor Fist, absolutely I have no reason to doubt him. He's one of my favorite content creators. Uh, as far as those things go, I have no problem. Oh, uh, Jim wants me to DM him? Okay. Give me a second here then. I've already DM'd him. He hasn't responded. So we'll see. Uh, if he uh, messages me back, we'll see what's uh, what's up. Let me look back through. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, uh, McGuffin says, Sticks uh, official wants you bad. Yeah, that works. Yeah, as long as he's willing to come on board. Let's have a conversation. If Medicare happens to be watching right now, I don't know. I don't, I can't pay attention to chat and to what I'm saying at the same time very easily. If you're in chat or something, I DM'd you on Twitter. Uh, fucking, you know, get on there and we'll see what we can do. That would go out for any other content creators from the, uh, sort of Kilroy event cycle, and I know it's a significant number of people. You've got to understand, one thing I'm well aware of is that a bunch of people have jumped off of the Kilroy event. I think uh, Tim, Tim Poole, uh, Lauren Southern, I think was billed and then jumped uh, off uh, the Kilroy event. I think she did that yesterday. Faith Goldie uh, and others. I, I think uh, Millennial Woes or Roaming Millennial. I get those two mixed up because they both have Millennial in the name. I'm well aware of that fact. I'm understanding that fact, but that doesn't mean that the event is a bad thing. It doesn't mean that the event is going to fail. It means that people have jumped off. Now, I've been in active communication with one of the organizers. I'm not going to say who because, you know, privacy and all. I have my own contacts. They're not the same. I don't think they overlap completely with what the average person has for a, like a list of contacts if they're mainly a YouTube creator. Because I like to branch out and talk to people that are like alt media, some of the smaller creators that aren't, you know, not necessarily dedicated YouTube or something. Uh, I would love to help the Kilroy event succeed. If it becomes clear that it's impossible, that's one thing. But the thing is, we're four months out from the Kilroy event. It's already raised every penny that it needs supposedly to raise. It's already got a venue. It's already got at least some speakers that have actually signed a contract and will definitely show up. We're halfway there already. You've got to understand that. Uh, people need to understand that things don't go off without a hitch. The fact that people who are not 100% as far as, yeah, you know, we've, we've fucking, uh, we've done 20, 30 conferences before, we've reigned over 30, 40 events, everything went off without a hitch, you know, we're old hands at this. The fact that they're newer at this and things, they still manage to raise the money, they have no problems on that end. That's pretty damn good. And as far as Dave Cullen, I find it absolutely disgusting that so many people are trying to take Dave Cullen's example and say, well, Dave Cullen is no longer going to Kilroy. It's doomed for sure. Now, he's telling you. He told you in his own video it's because his fucking mother died. And you're trying to use that as a way to attack the conference. I'm going to take his word for it. Say, hey, the dude's under stress. He's jumping off board because he's under stress. It has nothing to do with the organizational capacity. I'm looking at what I know about it, which is limited, but perhaps more, you know, I'm actually going to be speaking there. So it's probably more than the average person that's randomly commenting on it. I'm looking at it and I think that it's still capable of being salvaged. I, I don't see a problem with it. Now, again, if it becomes clear that people's worst concern, if people were right and it was like, oh, you know, it's just like a scam or something. Yeah, I would jump off board and I'd tell you not to show up. I don't have a reason at this time to believe that that's actually the case. And trust me, you would hear it first from me if it were. So stop worrying about such a thing. Now, I got to check my uh, Twitter DMs and all this stuff. All right. All right. I'm going to send... Uh, Medicare has responded. I'm going to send him the link for the Hangout. I think I send him... Yeah, give me a moment on this one because it can be a little bit uh, troublesome. I've never actually done this before, I think. Well, actually, I think I've done it once with Ottman, but he helped me set it up because he's actually more knowledgeable than me. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Hopefully this works. Let me click on it and see. Yeah, it takes you to the same page, I guess. All right, we're waiting on Medicar. I'm only on audio. Hopefully he will be because actually my connection is not like the greatest here. But I know you wanted to talk to Jim, so I'm going to have Jim on board, uh, unlike the other stream. Look, I believe truly in free speech, or I wouldn't fucking be doing this. So uh, if we can get him on here, it'll be funny. I think if, I've talked to him before anyway. It was great chat. And I'm half drunk off my ass. I hope he is too, because that'll just make it funnier. Oh, hi, dude. Uh, hey, is my audio coming in okay for you? Yeah, I can hear you. No, let me uh, ask this really quick. Can you uh, hear any echo? Is there a problem with any echo? Uh, not that I'm hearing, no. Okay, now I just want, I've been talking here for I think 20 minutes or so, so I just wanted you to give your thoughts because a, a hell of a lot of people wanted you to talk. You should put out the link because, you know, 10,000 people will probably jump aboard. Um, what are your thoughts on the Kilroy event because i wanted to hear it straight from you because i saw like about two or three hundred of your fans in the last stream uh, so i wanted to get it yeah it was pretty uh, it was impressive <laughs> um well my thoughts on this are it, it feels like it's devolving kind of into a shit show it reminds me i i know people don't like the comparison to dashcon being thrown out there but from a standpoint of ineptitude of administration uh, and delegation of responsibilities, it feels very, very much like DashCon. Uh, they didn't know how to manage their money. They didn't know how to manage their talent. Uh, people showed up to see specific guests. They were told specific guests were going to be there, like Night Vale uh, and different uh, different acts. They never showed up. Um, and you know, the, the big issue is seeing that kind of happening right now. Uh, the list of people that aren't showing up, I mean, you had mentioned Colin. Obviously, he has secondary reasons, which I think most people find understandable. But you've got people like uh, James Alsep, Lauren Southern, uh, Petty Bones not coming, Millennial Woes isn't coming, Baked Alaska isn't coming, uh, Andy and Chris Worski aren't coming, Tim Pool's not coming. And, and the list, you know, I, I saw Blair White is having second thoughts about it now. The list seems to be growing and growing. And like the parallels between those two. You know, I, I get it. I, I watched the stream that was just going on where uh, Base Mama and the other people were saying stuff like, well, you know, we have day jobs and it's our first time ever doing this. But, you know, on the other hand, you've been given $86,000. So I get it. It's your first time at the rodeo, but $86,000. You could take maybe five grand of that and give it to somebody who knows how to plan this sort of thing. Uh, when looking at their budget breakdown, for administrative fees and security uh you're looking at stuff like I, I think it was damn near half of it like 41 to 43 thousand you know and i've heard the counter argument brought up that oh well security is important what about ben shapiro well <laughs> you know I, I you guys aren't you know the the guest list that's showing up at this thing aren't ben shapiro we're not talking about a university speaking gig where people are having to hire out a police force because the university demands it. And so it's $50,000 for a counter sniper team. We're talking about an event at a hotel. You know, I brought up that Sargon of Akkad did This Week in Stupid, and he seemed to be doing a live event. And he had an audience watching. And, you know, I, don't, I didn't see him needing security. And if he did have it, it probably wasn't very many people. It probably wasn't a large budget for security. It looked like it was just a little auditorium, a little group gathering. Um, the, you know, those videos are up on his channel. So it, it's just a lot of things like that. I know Alsep raised the concern about being disinvited. Uh, Baked Alaska said, hey, you know, I talked to Dave Cullen. He invited me to this. I put the word out to my fans. They put in, you know, hundreds of dollars. And then within a day or two, and the people on the stream confirmed this, within a day or two, I'm disinvited. My name is removed. And I'm basically not given any information. And in fact, on some black guy's stream, if you look at a lot of the super chats that were coming up, a lot of people were saying, I gave a lot of money and nobody will respond to me. Or I contacted you on Facebook and nobody will get back to me. And that's been a common complaint, uh, not just from people that gave money to support it, but people that were invited to speak like Lauren Southern uh, saying that she's not you know, getting any response about the contracts or about any of that. So that I mean that's that's my my general thoughts on that. I, I don't know. What do you think? 
Yeah. Um, let me let me offer both. Let me offer my thoughts here, and it's twofold. One part is definitely in defense of the people organizing Kilroy. The other part is I, I am sympathetic towards some of those that were billed to speak and have had problems. I think they bit off more than they can chew, uh, which is to say that two or three people organizing an event of that magnitude, I think originally, I think it was meant to be a small event. And when they realized how big it was going to be, because they, they I think they cast the net wide and invited all sorts of people of, of figuring that maybe a tenth of them would actually show. When they realized that interest was actually far higher than that, it made the event far too large. Now, I, I have never spoken to a, a baked Alaska. I've spoken to Alsop, and I've spoken to Lauren Southern and a few others. And I sympathize with them to the extent of if, if they weren't getting proper communication, that's definitely a problem. But we got to realize one thing, I think the lack of communication, don't ascribe to malice what can be ascribed to simply things aren't working quite properly. I think that there, there were too many speakers. There were, oddly enough, there was too much money raised in too short a period of time and things went ahead too quickly. At the same time though, having spoken myself with Based Mama and others, I did get responses. I am convinced, and I know some people, they won't agree with this, they won't like that I'm saying this. I'm convinced that there was no malice intended and that the event was meant to be purely, it's not a scam, it's not, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. It's just flawed like any other conference that was being led by people who didn't have enough experience in doing that. And I think that the contract side, and I think Cullen alluded to this, was basically, yeah, the lawyers sort of drew this stuff up, and then, you know, uh, you know, those of us who didn't necessarily like this idea, we were kind of sidelined for the moment. Then we realized what happened. We sort of swept in. Colin, as far as I'm concerned, it's totally moronic that people are trying to use him as a reason to attack the Kilroy event. He's saying his mom died. It, it's, it's so beyond me to think that anybody would think it was a good idea to say, well, you know, Cullen's jumped off board. The, the Kilroy conference is dying. He's, he's got his own stuff to deal with. He's telling people why, and they're reading into it more than that. But one thing I can understand, any individual who planned to show up because they're, you know, their chosen e-celeb, whether it's Southern or whoever it happens to be, if they signed up for it, they bought a ticket, you know, because one or two people were going to be there, and then that person's not going to be there, that just, in my mind, that is definitely a problem and it should be addressed. Like maybe they should be refunded and like the fundraising should continue or something. Uh, that would make sense to me. Like I would make up my part, uh, you know, on my own. Like I could definitely pay if it came down to it and it was a few grand short. I would make up the fucking difference just to be able to go and I'd say, hey, give me a couple extra slots or something. Because I care about, the, for me, I, I hope you understand this, and, and I want to hear your thoughts about this. My mind is that because people have signed up for the conference and bought tickets, they're saying, hey, I'm going to go to Phoenix because Styx is going to be there, or in part because Styx is going to be there. It's my responsibility. It's no longer my right to say I'm not going to go unless it's canceled or unless it's going to be so absolutely terrible that there will be no actual event and it will literally be DashCon. I, I wanted to hear your thoughts about that because I've told people. And people, I think mostly they understand that it's not like, you know, oh, loyalty to based mama or something like that. I have no problem with the organizers. For me, it's loyalty mostly to my fans. Uh, no, no. I mean, I, I do understand that. I mean, I, I think Andy Worski has a good workaround to that. I mean, he has issues with the organization and the organizers, which I think are completely legitimate. Uh, you know, wanting to do a panel, not getting any response on it, uh, being told he had to do a certain panel that he didn't want to do. Um, and, you know, he feels bad that he's got fans coming out. And so he's going to go down there and do, you know, a separate thing. So for the Andy Worski fans that are that are coming out, he's going to meet them ahead of time and hang out with them and then go with the you know older ones over 21 to do a bar hop. So, you know, he, he's found a way to address the issue of, well, you know, shit, I'm flying out to uh, Phoenix or wherever. And uh, yeah, I wanted to see Worski, but you're not going to be at this Kilroy thing. Well, now you can come hang out in the bar with me. 
So I, I think that's a good workaround. You know, one of the issues I had, the thing that really caught my attention about all this in the beginning was Tim Poole had raised issues about the NDA and the non-compete, you know, saying I've done a bunch of different speaking gigs. I find it really weird that I have a, a three-year NDA and a six, uh, 16 month uh, non-compete contract. Now in the comment section, as Tim Poole was talking about this, because is the way Poole put it is much like uh, the way Andy put it and kind of like how you're talking about it. You know, hey, I help promote this. I help people, you know, uh, them raise funds for this. I have a responsibility to the people that I got the message out to so they know what's going on. Because he didn't want them just to show up and then, you know, where the fuck is Tim Pool? Uh, the response he got in the comment section was some mind-blowing shit. Now, one of the people was, uh, the, the, the Twitter handle is like Harem Desert or something like that, who's going to be a speaker at the event. Uh, some ex-Muslim activist or something like that. I mean, that's, that's like her niche. Um, and she's apparently, you know, friends or acquaintances with Base Mom and the person organizing it. Her response was to basically say things like, She's deleted these tweets, but I think they're tweet saved and enough people have seen them. So, I mean, if you don't want to take my word for it or people listening don't want to, ask around. Um, but, just, you know, effectively said to Tim Pool, you're a horrible person. You're a dangerous person. Uh, you put people like me at risk. Uh, you're a bad ally. Uh, and you're a danger to women. So, you know, his trying to be responsible and saying, I have issues with this conference was met with the most typical virulent SJW kind of style bullshit faggotry I've really ever seen, which is, oh my God, you're such a you're the patriarchal shitlord kind of stuff. And he was getting just shit flung at him for this to the point where he made a video kind of addressing it. Uh, and, you know, it, that seemed really fucking weird to me. Even when I started talking about it, I had these people start shit talking me. I had this woman who said that she needed NDAs. She said, you know, one of the reasons we have NDAs at this is because I need protection. Uh, <laughs> come and say, oh, you know, you better not fuck with an ex-Muslim. I'll teach you a lesson. And then started putting up WebM videos on her Twitter account talking about how she used to be a, a former terrorist supporter. Like some weird kind of implied threat. Uh, She's since deleted those. I have copies of all of them because they're funny. Uh, so I, I don't know what the fuck is going on with this show. All I see is an outsider looking at this is DashCon. You've got a group of people that raised a shit ton of money who promised all these different speakers. And now speakers are dropping out for a whole assortment of reasons. Some people don't like the contracts. Uh, some people are being denied panels. You know, Alsip was saying, I wanted to talk about identitarianism uh, and was told, no, you can't. But there was already a panel on identitarianism in Ireland. So it was obviously a subject that was going to be broached. By the, uh, by the, by the way, I don't like to interrupt you here, but uh, Warski is actually in chat. Uh, I don't know. Uh, do you f does he follow you on Twitter? Maybe you could send him a DM and send him the link. Uh, yeah, if you, if you want to get one, one second here, let me, uh, let me throw it yeah. to him. Yeah, Warski, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but you should definitely join up here because it'd be funny. I've, I don't think I've talked to you. That'd be cool. And I have to mute my microphone anytime anyone else is talking. Otherwise, it uh, gives so much feedback. It's uh, it's impossible here. I, uh, uh, I hope I've got so. the world's shittiest mic, so it could be me. Yeah, um, no, I, I'm going to send no. the link for you. Yours is way higher quality. I don't know what kind of microphone you use. I thought it was like, you know, one of those $1,000 setups or something. It's a $20 Logitech headset. It's the it's You buy it at Walmart when your normal headset breaks. See, but, I use an AT2020. It's like a $100 mic, and it sounds like shit compared to yours. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't know. I guess my voice blends in okay with the, uh, with the nice staticky backgrounds. I get people yelling at me all the time saying, if I listen to your videos with headphones on, it sounds like I'm getting fucked to death by static. So maybe, I don't know, maybe something about Google Hangouts cleans it up. I have no clue. Maybe it's the lack of bass or something. I don't know. But uh, really yeah, well, while, while we're waiting for him maybe to join here, I hope he does. Uh, and maybe other people. Like uh, if Based Mama's here, I don't know You know, if she knows that it's here. Someone tweeted at her or something. I'd love to hear your thoughts too because I've been in coordination with her. I've got to say this again for anyone that's not aware. I don't have any problem with any organizer or any speaker former or current, like I'm totally neutral. I'm Switzerland when it comes to this because my loyalty is first to my fans 
specifically. And second, I believe in independent content creation. If there's a killer event, I want it to go well. If, if it does, great. If it doesn't go well, I, I'll try to do whatever that I can for it. Like if it became a dash con, let's say it became like literally a ball pit in a gymnasium. <laughs> so I don't think it could possibly be that bad. I honestly, I don't think it would be possible to replicate Tumblr. Tumblr is the worst. But if it did, I would hire strippers. I would hire an open bar. I would hire a DJ myself and we'd party down. To tell the truth, I would drop a few grand just to do that. I mean, we'd have a good time, like for whoever is there. Uh, because if I'm going to show up, I'm going to give people a good time. It's just the way that I do business. Uh, did uh, did he see the tweet, by the way? Uh, or did who? Are you talking about Worski or are you talking about uh, something else? Yeah, did Worski see it, maybe? Oh, no, yeah. I sent him a DM with the link to the Hangout. Okay, great. Yep, yep. So he he has that. Um, uh, let me let me get your your take on this. Just a hypothetical, because I I want to see what your perspective would be if you were Tim Pool. I mean, let's say you did have an issue with a contract that was put in front of you, and you talked about it publicly, and then friends of the organizers and speakers at the event said that you're a dangerous man and you want to hurt Muslim women. How would you react to that? I'd say I can understand their perspective, but not necessarily anybody who's not a Muslim apostate. Look. Uh, having never been a Muslim or in a Muslim country, thankfully, or anything like that, uh, I can understand that they would be, uh, yeah, at a physical risk by being apostates. And they're going to show up, I assume, that they would want. It's like when you said uh, how much, like 50% of the cost was security. For them, I can kind of understand it, to tell the truth. Um as far as me, like I can be my own security, but if someone's like, you know, you get some five foot tall Muslim, Muslim uh, woman, yeah, I can understand. She's probably worried that someone's going to infiltrate and throw acid in her face or something. And I've, I, I try to, and you got to understand also, it's not so much, I don't really give a shit about my safety so much, but my fans, I definitely fucking care about them. And so if there's enough security at the Killeroy event or any other event I'm at, that is like a weight off. And if they needed, I, I just hope one thing I will say, you remember at DashCon when they said, well, we need to raise like an extra, like, what was it? Two, $3,000. So, you know, everyone chip in. If they need that, I hope that they get it from the speakers and creators because I would be willing to do that. And I, again, it's like Patreon. I don't want to see those that are like donor or subscriber get fucked. If they've already bought a ticket, leave them alone. You let me take care of it. I'll help to coordinate everything, uh, but I need to know what's going on, basically, in order, I guess, to do that. And so what's, what's your take on the compensation issue? Because I, I, I found this interesting. Uh, some people are saying they've been offered no compensation or no, there's been no talk of money at all. Uh, other people have basically, you know, uh, on the down low because of NDAs or whatever reason, have said, yeah, uh, we're, we're getting paid. Um, have you been offered any compensation yet? Has that even been discussed with you by any of the organizers? Since I haven't yet signed the contract, I guess I can talk about that. Um, I've been offered non-monetary compensation. Um, something that would be really, it's not the sort of thing that somebody who's wealthy would expect. It's, ba it's basically, hey, I get lodging. Uh, everything else I take care of myself. Okay. As, as I've, I've been offered not one penny to speak at Kilroy, and I don't expect them to offer it. Like, I never expected them to offer me even necessarily solid speaking slots. I expected that I would show up and it'd be like, hey, you know, we need you to go in and talk about something on this panel. It's actually better organized than I expected on that end. But the thing is, I'm like some like rubbish small town boy. Trust me when I say I have no experience with these things. If I were trying to organize this, I probably would do a shittier job, which is really the problem. Uh, it looks like uh, Worski. Worski, there. How you all doing? Ah, uh, good. I saw, you, I saw you on the stream earlier. Uh, 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 how did I do? <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you did great. You brought up good points. You brought up uh, you brought up good points, and some of the answers you got were uh, <laughs> illuminating. Jesus Christ, that was, uh, it, it's been, like, this weekend has been probably the most intense fucking weekend uh, I've been through, my God, my God, and I, I, I feel like <clears throat> when I was, before when I was on 
the uh, stream, I there was a lot of lies and a lot of bullshit uh, being said. And then when I came on and I, I I questioned them on everything by the end of the stream, I don't know if you heard the end. She's gonna now want she wants to now talk to all the people that were disinvited. Uh, she wants to talk about compensation now. Everything that was uh, brought up by certain people from the right, aka you know James Allsup and all those people, were being ignored for for days all the emails that were sent all the concerns they were completely unanswered and then when this was blown out of the water by a few people including myself uh on that stream last night now now there's conversations happening so yeah it's 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 really telling that it took me to to do a live stream and make them fess up and and discuss what you know what's actually happening and i don't know i i feel like what they did today on derek's channel it it was it's just lighting it's just throwing gasoline on the fire at this point in my opinion because it was yeah, uh, we're fucked up like in my opinion it, it was just messed up i don't i don't i i've lost a lot of faith in it man was it just pr to you is that how it felt like oh we're not sorry we did something wrong we're sorry we got caught kind of thing Yes, because because if you think about it, um, uh, uh, talking about the panels, like the the one specific panel when I was talking to Lauren Southern last night, and you know uh, I wasn't talking to James also, but his video and all that stuff, uh, they have been raising these concerns the entire time. Baked Alaska uh, was raising these concerns, and no one was fucking saying anything. And obviously now that shit hit the fan, yeah, it's all it's all PR at this point. And and then we like I think the most telling thing was they were saying forever that the panels were full, uh, everything's been you know like planned. Uh, it's 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 like we can't add anyone else's panel or ideas or other speakers. And then they start saying I don't know if you heard, but oh tomorrow we have a guest announcement. And then everyone in the super chat, everyone was ignoring the super chat, but I brought it up because. Uh, I think that guy T and uh, a baked Alaska brought it up. They're like, wait, 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 wait. How, how, how have you been telling us for months that there was scheduling conflicts and everything was full, but now you are adding more guests? And I got some DMs at the end of the stream before I hopped on here uh, from people saying that's complete bullshit because uh, new new guests have been added recently. And this is after the whole baked Alaska and Lauren Southern um, um, incident. And if you think about it, you like I said, you have four of the biggest guest speakers whose subscriber count, if you add, is about oh, it's over half a million. Wanted one panel to talk about what they want to talk about, and they were denied that. But all their viewers are coming to see them talk about what they want to talk about. And then Based Mama is trying to like adjust it into what she wants them to talk about. And that's fucking, that's terrible. And then after I bring it up on the stream, now it's like, okay, fine, never mind. We'll change our mind. Let's just talk to them. And I'm like, yo, it's, it's, people have a bad taste in their mouth about this. People have lost faith on, on what's happening here like myself, and like I said, I, I'm still going to go and meet the viewers and P I did promote it and people are coming to see me and I'm going to do that bar hopping thing and hang out with people uh, around because I feel guilty about this entire situation that I promoted it. And yeah, man, the PR, it, like the backpedaling intensifies hardcore. Like now, it, now, Andy, Andy, can I ask something? I, uh, by the way, it's good to meet you because I haven't, you know, I think, man. spoken. I've been a fan for a long time, by the way. Yeah, I've been, I've watched some of your stuff. It's pretty damn good. Thanks, uh, man. Uh, but why, uh, one thing is that I think that there are actually more people that are still signed on than some people suggest uh, because a lot of the bigger names have climbed off, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other people that can get on. Like, and not to defend any ineptitude, but I don't think that Based Mama and Danger Sister have done a bad job. It's just they're not experienced enough, and it's going to take time to get people back aboard. And I've given them suggestions. My thing was 
since I'm since unless it collapses entirely, I'm actually going to go because I have loyalty to my subscribers. I've been trying to help any way that I can. And I've got my own contacts. You know, I've got some people that are, you know, they're like larger creators, but they're also fans. I'm like, hey, why don't we get some of these people aboard? You know, it'd be good. It doesn't need to be, I think, as large as it was <laughs> for a while there. It looked like it was going to be so massive. Yeah. Nobody would have more than an hour of speaking time. I think that's part of the problem. It's almost like the Kilroy event is a victim of its own success as far as the initial support. But then uh, some people, now I've spoken with Alsup, and I have absolutely no problem. I don't want anyone here to misinterpret this. I like Alsup's content. But it seemed like some people who were more identitarian like took this like uh, liking to the fact that Kilroy had kinks in it or had difficulty. Even though as far as I'm concerned, there's no particular reason to believe that anyone was disinvited. Now, if someone can prove to me that anyone was disinvited from the event for their specific views, I would look askance to it. But I want to actually, I want to see it from those people themselves. I want something archived, not just something, hey, you know, so and so said. Uh, I, I want to see it for myself. Is that actually out there somewhere? Well, sticks. I mean, if you look at the people that have left, and Base Mama addressed this on the stream she just did with some black guy. It was either her or um, uh, whoever the other person was. Uh, uh, Sister Danger. <clears throat> Sister Danger. But the, the point was brought up, uh, the question was asked, essentially, and I'm paraphrasing here, but that's generally what was spoken about. Are there any alt-right people that are going to show up now? Because nobody is anymore. You know, all those disinvitations and all the people that were having contract issues seem to be alt-right people. Or, you know, some of them were. I mean, Tim Pool isn't obviously, you know what I mean. But her response was, well, we've got a libertarian. Now, and Andy, when you were talking about this, you said she put up a response video saying, we don't want you to come. Yeah. you uh, Have you watched James Alsup's video on Kilroy? Yeah, I've seen. Uh, by the way, I have to mute my microphone whenever other people are talking, uh, Andy. So, so it takes me a second to respond. That's why there's a delay. Uh, it's not it's not due to any to any lag or anything uh yeah i've i've seen part of that and and again i can understand but i i just i can't bring myself to believe that the organizers would be malevolent in that case and that it had nothing to do with hey there are so many people that have signed up there's no way to actually accommodate them all uh are, are we sure that it's due to ideology or could we could we ascribe it to hey the skeptics got a board then identitarians got aboard when everything was already filled. And I'm just arguing devil's advocate here for a bit. Well, okay. Yeah, no, no, I understand what you're saying. Um, and so basically with, with based mama is she made that video pretty much, you know, just saying, you know, fuck, like, fuck, I don't want you to have your, your fucking, uh, your panel. No, you're not going to do it on that. Um, uh, we, oh, oh, we don't have time for that panel, but if you do it about, you know, this topic, yeah, we'll have time for you, which just shows to me that she just wants them to talk about what she wants them to talk about. And if there weren't any clear cut disinvitations, uh, cause I don't I, like yet, yeah, like you said, there's no, like James also claims that they removed him off the website, um, without emailing him or calling him or anything like that uh so so that's you know his claim uh but uh from what i saw from me personally when i brought up my panel idea i was just thrown out of the loop it, they were like no andy you're not doing it on that you're gonna do it on this um I wanted to do it on comedy and offensive comedy and what's the line is there a line uh, and bring up a bunch of people who are really offensive to talk about like how we present ourselves. Um, and yeah, it, see, was just, it was see, just shot down. I'm sorry, go ahead, Ben. Uh, finish your thought if you want to. Yeah. Well, well, I just didn't say it was shot down immediately. And they're like, no, uh, you, you could do it on uh, social justice warrior toxicity, you know, or some bullshit like that, which I didn't want to do, but you know, I was like, whatever, fine. I'll, 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 you know, I already promoted this, so I'll do it, I guess. And, you know, uh, but, but then them not letting them have their own panel, they didn't want that. 
And when I was trying to email them, they weren't emailing me back. I was messaging Base Mama. I messaged Dave Colin with my experience with Base Mama. Me and her got into a really bad spat. And he's like, sorry, man. I don't know what I can really do about this. I don't know what I can really say. Uh, she's the one uh, running the events. And she's just browbeating people. So maybe it's not uh, uh, just uninviting people, but it feels as if Based didn't want them there. And with her sending back Faith Goldie a blank email, not responding to Lauren Southern. I was DM'd by some other people uh, who have who have who have written who have signed contracts saying they can't really say anything, but this is their thoughts and they agree with what I'm saying. And it just feels as if she doesn't want them there. And if you watch that video, she's saying, uh, no, like. Like, I don't want you to fucking have that panel. Uh, are you fucking Nazis? Uh, I picked this state for a reason. It's conceal and carry. Uh, and people are carrying. So if you want to fuck our shit up, we'll fuck your shit up. It just seems very, very threatening in a way where it's like, uh, not maybe just an email saying you are no longer invited, but it's, 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 you know, circumstantial with how they're acting you know what i mean does that make sense yeah um but several things first and foremost hello to razor fist by the way to everyone in chat and everywhere else we are not the same person you're gonna get to see us on the same live stream so so fucking enjoy that's like the greatest thing ever hi razor fist if you could say hi there dude hello if you can hear me yep i can hear you Okay, right. Yeah. I was having microphone issues while I was trying to set up. So yeah, <laughs> and, and and secondly, just to just to address that, I, I'm pretty sure that the issue with baked Alaska, and I don't know if he's here or not because I'm not looking at chat like I can't. I'm 99% sure. Not being an organizer, not being on the inner workings, I'm pretty sure that it has to do with the fact that everything was overflowing already, and and based you know base mama can't do everything on her own. It's more like baked mama, I think, after a while, because it's like there's so many people that you're trying to coordinate with. It gets a little bit stressful. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt on that one. I could be wrong. Sure. Uh, also, I wanted to get Razor Fist thoughts, just in general, about the Kilroy event, its direction, uh, to confirm or deny whether you're still definitely going to people here and so forth. Like, I'm trying to get people aboard uh you know it's literally free speech on this stream so say what you want just just don't use racial slurs because then google have a fucking problem because they're goofy <laughs> i like that you have to specify that <laughs> uh, no i have a unique perspective because i was actually in the room when this concept was being uh kicked around uh with the organizers of it before it was you know when it was still in the uh, nascent stages and uh, we met up at the Georgian Dragon Pub. Uh, Dave Cullen, uh, Base Mama, uh, a couple other people. I know her fiance was one of them. And a um, Moose dude was there. And, you know, all the organizer folks were there. And basically, it sounded like they were just coming up with this idea on the fly. That's literally how this came to be. You have to understand. I, I, I concur with Styx's assessment. Like, don't ascribe malice to something that can be explained away with, you know, simple inexperience. Um, I, I agree. It was literally a concept that came about when, like, four people were sitting around a table at a pub having a beer. That, that was it. <laughs> Except for me, I don't drink. So I didn't... I don't really see the malice. I, I don't see the... Uh, you know, there's definitely some wonkiness with the miscommunication and that's what i think it is primarily is just miscommunication you know that's that's the sense that i get i don't you know i don't know base mama super well i don't know dave cullen super well i've i've met them the once when we hung out at the at the georgian dragon but their idea from the very beginning was free speech free speech free speech and i think i think part of it is didn't base mama explain this in, in a video recently something to the effect of like they had to really focus in on just like one topic instead of having a really broad uh, sort of categorical approach to what they were actually going to be talking about at the event. 
I thought that was the case. Yeah, because I can imagine like over the course of two or even I think two and a half days. Yeah. That would be that with even like if you had a dozen speakers, that'd be way, way too little time to cover basically anything other than free speech and maybe like all tech. Like I, I'm big on all tech because I think that that's the biggest proponent of free speech. But like you can only dedicate so much time even to such an important topic. Like I think some people wanted to have identitarian panels. And I don't, I, to explain this to everyone who's in like this, like 4,000 people viewing and to all of you, I don't have a problem with someone being an identitarian. I support their free speech. But if you have a panel about that, it's a lightning rod, I think, for yeah. attacks by people that are outside. They're going to cast it. It's a Nazi rally. Uh, these people are, are evil and, and evil <laughs> far writers. They're going to destroy the whole world. We need to suppress them. We need a law against it. Let's go protest. There'll be a thousand people throwing rocks at the windows. Yeah. And, and Phoenix is proximitous enough to California that, you know, they'd ship them in by the bus load protest. So, yeah. <laughs> but I, look. So, can I, can I ask something here though? I mean, it, it's billed as a free speech event. The first and, off, good and, to meet you, by the way. Sorry. It, oh yeah. Good to meet you. Uh, it, it's billed as a free speech event. And to say that this is too hot a topic to handle because we have optic or optics to worry about seems yeah. kind of stupid. And you've got forty thousand dollars for security, so yes, it, it's not so much I think optics so much as the fact though that it would be, it, it it would actually serve the opposite effect if you have free speech associated with hey here's racists you know it might not be fair to assess it that like I look at Lauren Southern I've spoken with her I've watched her material for for a long time I know that she's not like a racist TM two thousand sixteen. But we're YouTubers. We're more, we're, I hate to say it, but we as content creators and our fans are more intelligent than the general population worldwide. Most of those people are taken in by propaganda. If we let, a, a, if a conference, here's the paradox if the conference precludes identitarians, well, it's not really about free speech. It's basically selective, it's just like the establishment. If it does allow them on board, then it gets attacked. I think the establishment must be reveling in it. When I see Jared Holt from Right Wing Watch laughing about the fact, oh, Kilroy is going to be a disaster. It's going to be horrible. Everyone's leaving. And when I see that, and then I see some identitarian saying the same thing, I'm like, oh, this is surreal. I can't believe this is even happening. It's not supposed to happen like this. Can't we organize something where there where there's some degree of security against wait, wait, the establishment? But, I hope. But, but, but I, I have to say one thing, because anyway. yeah, no, I, no I, I understand your point of view. However, when you use four of the biggest guest speakers that you have as promotional, you know, tools to get donations and buy tickets, the people who are going there are going there to see those people like with whatever topic they're talking about. And then when you tell those four people after they've promoted the event and got donations for the event, and then you go, you can't talk about what you want to talk about. That's just false advertising at that point. I, I'm aware of that fact. See, I'm not an organizer. And I thought that these people primarily like rescinded their want to go to Kilroy on their own. What was was were Lauren and Millennial Woes and these others were they kicked off, or no. did they choose to leave? Uh, yeah. Razor, you'd pr you you're like semi an organizer, aren't you? You'd know bet more about this. Than <laughs> no, me. I'm not an organizer. I mean, I, they're they're still trying to wrangle me into to sign in a deal or whatever or a contract to appear. But um, I. From what I understand, Lauren Southern opted not to go after the Tim Pool fiasco, which I, I still maintain. I think he could have handled that better. I think he, you know, there was a more than a little grandstanding involved in that one, um, because you can let your fans know you're not going to be somewhere without being like, and here's the terms of my contract. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like he could have been like, okay, hey, hey guys, I'm, I'm not going to go. I couldn't, we couldn't reach it terms on a contract. How many times have you heard that from people who are going to star in a movie or you know be on a television show or something? Like this is a pretty common form letter response. But that, that's just my feeling on it. Um, after that, it seemed like there were a number of people who were like, okay, this is shady because the NDA. And I agree, like the NDA is a little, a little wonky. But at the same time, I understand some of their trepidation with regard to like, 
you know, wanting to protect uh, ex-Muslim speakers who probably get death threats every day of their life. Uh, I can understand that to a degree. I can only imagine the sublime personal hell that must be. Uh, but and that's the thing. Like, I'm not even sure. Like, are those people just going to be speaking on, you know, freedom of speech or are they going to be speaking on religion or whatever? Like I said, it seems like the main thing. And this is if, if I disagree with the organizers on one thing, it would be the paring down to just one topic. I understand you only have two days, but like some kind of variety. Like I, I got to imagine sitting down, um, listening to one person after another person after another person talk about the exact same topic would get a little old hat. But then again, I've never organized one of these before. And uh, witnessing this uh, supreme goat fuck, I'm not inclined to saunter on down that road anytime in the near future either. Hey, hey Sticks, is it cool? Um, I got an email from baked alaska and he was one person who was yes yes please yeah. please send him the link because i don't actually know how that uh, not a problem yeah get him aboard actually uh what you want to do is you want to click a little like plus uh it has like, like a person and then like a plus sign on it okay and put it in the chat like no obviously it's like in the public chat in our chat over here and then i'll copy that and send it over to baked alaska I don't know. I, I still feel as if that. And I'm trying. I'm trying to do this, but just a second here, because I don't have my microphone meter. I'm trying to find. Uh, oh, where's the chat? I don't know where this is. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I see it. Never mind. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, do, do you see that? Yeah, and I I understand what you're all saying about the the security reasons and all that stuff. But again, you know, if we're worried about security reasons, let's talk about all the. All the ex-Muslims who are who are heading there, uh, I I think that that is more of a security risk. It, though I am fine with them speaking, um, I think that's more of a security risk than people talking about Western identitarianism. You know what I mean? And the fact that they were trying to change that into talking about censorship on the ideology, I think that's bullshit because. Uh, it, it was about changing it because it has to be about free speech and censorship or whatever. But then you have a panel that's called Identit uh, History of Identitarianism in Ireland. And then it's like, okay, what's the line? What's the line of what's okay and what's not okay? And you have four of the biggest speakers want to do one panel. And I mean, imagine that panel with, with uh, uh, the one that's called uh, After Islam or something. Like that one's going to be way more intense, uh, uh, more of an intense security risk than what Lauren Southern and Jane, uh, James Alsop had planned, in my opinion. Yeah, like uh, as far as uh, the things I was going to speak on is like alt tech, uh, YouTube content creation, basically, and then just general free speech. It's not it's not that edgy for the most part. The problem mm. is uh, with with Islamic apostates comes a need for security. Uh, with anyone who's perceived, it's uh, I've been talking to people about perception over reality now for a couple of years. The I know that the reality is like you know anyone that's on this chat's not racist. Anyone going to kill Roy? They're not. Alsip's not a racist. Lauren Southern's not racist. But a lot of people have been convinced of that by like idiots within the lamestream media. Uh, it 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 uh, it becomes difficult, I think, at some points to brand things. When everything keeps moving so quickly, it's hard for us to maneuver uh, and make it clear to people outside of like the YouTube community, hey, no, this individual's not actually, they don't actually want to kill six million people. That's a lie that's been told to you by CNN. By the way, uh, Baked Alaska has just joined us. Uh, do you have a mic, uh, Base? Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I uh, appreciate you guys bringing me on finally. Hey man. Yeah, it's good to hear from you, dude. I've never I don't think I've spoken to you either. Yeah, no, we haven't spoken. Um I'm def definitely a fan of your sticks and Andy. You guys make some dope dope shit. But yeah, um I mean, I think I wanted to speak cuz I hear a lot of people saying, "Oh, nobody was disinvited. That doesn't exist and all that." So I just wanted to give my account real quick if that's okay. Is that cool? Absolutely, my man. All right, cool. So, um yeah, basically, so what happened with me 
is um, I was invited by Dave Cullen, and if you guys don't know, I was recently given a uh, lifetime ban from Twitter. I had about 200,000 followers. I was verified. It, I Also, my uh, Periscope uh, was uh, about 60,000 followers, and that was just deleted. Uh, Twitter didn't give me any sort of email or... Re they didn't give me even a reason, which is very rare. They at least usually uh, give you a reason, and so that a lot was of going around. A lot of that these days, I hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Just so, make a new account and just say fuck it, and <laughs> just don't tell them it's you. Uh, well, I've tried to do that, but they have me IP banned, so I, I actually can't. I, if um, you if you account. message me, if you message me, I can teach you how to uh, override that. Don't worry. Okay, well, I can't DM you, so I need, like, Andy, maybe you could send him my email or something. I'm having to, like, yeah, it's funny, sure. I, I have to, like, do the old school way of communicating now. I have to, like, email and write letters to people. It's <laughs> pretty awesome. Um, but, yeah, basically, I, uh, you know, I feel like I'm, that's why Dave asked me because, you know, I, I can speak on Internet censorship. I've been permanently banned from PayPal, GoFundMe. Uh, my book was taken off Amazon. Um, yeah, I, I've been Patreon, uh, pretty much banned from everything. And, and, and the funny thing is when you meet me or if you talk to me, I'm really not like that edgy of a person. I'm just like a guy from Alaska that likes to shoot the shit and I'm just not very politically correct, but, uh, I'm not really like, I've never advocated for violence or anything crazy like that. Um, so I, I just thought it was strange that they would put me up on the website, like th this is the thing, like if, if they just didn't want to have me there or whatever, like I wouldn't care at all. Um, but they invited me, they promoted me, and I, I have a ton of fans that uh, paid $250 VIP tickets and they've sent me screenshots. And then I was removed from the site and then I emailed back asking how could uh, my fans get refunds because they were asking me and I got no response and I emailed again and I emailed again. And then I actually talked to, I think it was like, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but I think I talked to like Bunty King who I'm friends with. And he was like, oh yeah, I just like talk to them. And they're responding to me right away. And so I was like, what the fuck, man? Like I thought maybe, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I said, maybe they're super busy and maybe they're not getting back to me. But then they were talking to other people. They were talking to Faith Goldie. And so it, it became very obvious that they, did not like uh, what I was saying, and they 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 still to this day have not responded about how to get my fans donations. And so honestly, I don't care about me. I care about getting my fans donations who paid two hundred fifty dollars just to see me, James Alsup, and Faith Goldie specifically. There's a ton of people, whether you like what we have to say or not, that wanted to come specifically for me, Faith, and James. And I think we all owe those people refunds or some sort of explanation or else that's very unprofessional. You can't, you can't just put someone's name on like a concert listing and people buy tickets and then be like, Oh, never mind, They're not coming. So I just want to have a real common sense approach to this. And it's just, it's just unprofessional to do that. And they're not explaining it and they're not answering people. I, I, I think yeah. they answered it today, though. Uh, when uh, Derek was asking Base Mama about it, he asked about the refunds, and she finally said something about it. What they said was, if you head over to your PayPal and then you you cancel your transaction, it'll be refunded to you. And yeah, but that's that, the problem is they're, they're saying that now. They're, they're, there's I know. Been, been months of ignoring me, and, and they were just hoping that everything would slip by and that they could keep all this money. Like they should have answered me then and said, oh, I'm really sorry. You know, here's how your fans or James fans or whoever can get refunds. We want to make this right for you. And I even told them I was planning on still going and like still like excited about the event even after they disinvited me and I was never offered a contract. I, I didn't back out. I was, I was disinvited. I, I didn't. I didn't yeah. have a contract situation. So I'm speaking speaking for myself, like that's why I'm that's the main reason why I'm still going despite all the problems is uh, some of my fans have bought in. I think some of them are still planning to go, so they expect me to be there. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's almost an inverse of the situation. I can understand how you feel though, but 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 baked. 
Uh, what if it was literally just overflow and like they got swept up and for days they can't coordinate with anyone? Okay, okay. There's a Here, thousand people. No, I, no, I, no. Like I there's have, a thousand people have, communicating with. Them. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying this okay. is a possibility. So, I'm not saying that I necessarily believe that. Let me rebuttal, stick. So here it is. If that was the case then they would have instantly been able to respond to me and said, you know, it was scheduling. Here is how either here is how your fans can get refunds or sorry, we're not doing refunds. Instead, they completely ignored me while other people that were um, with the event uh, they were communicating with. And I would also like to point out they based mama and some other people on the roster were in a discord server dedicated to doxing me, Faith Goldie, James Allsup, and many others, which I find incredibly disgusting. And I oh, don't you know mean how the, you can, wait, you I, mean I don't the, know you mean how you server? You mean I don't know how you stand thing? up for that lady. She's disgusting. You mean the Kraut and T thing? Yeah. The, the, wait, they were trying to dox you and the crowd, they were yeah, involved there, with that? Whole, there was a whole channel with my name on it. It said Baked Alaska and it was dedicated to doxing and sending threatening. You, uh, wait, 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 I'm I've, I've, I'm I've I'm followed, I'm listen, I'm listen, I'm listen, I'm listen, I'm listen, Worski, I've, I've followed you on Twitter and DM'd you. Get me, if you can oh, get me baked or either of you. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that right show now. Show me okay. screenshots. If you can yeah. show me oh, sure. of them involved with trying to dox. That, well, changes, that changes things a little bit. Yeah. Okay. You so, gotta get those to me. So, so basically, uh, all right, I'll send that ASAP. It was uh, Braving Ruin who released uh, three gigs worth of screenshots, you know, uh, of the server as well. Uh, I just have to, like to point out that the server was initially created to basically debunk people, get scientists in there to try and debunk as. Um, all the uh, ideas of certain people. So there was lists of names and stuff, but then it came out that Kraut ha had actually, uh, you know, found C Coach Red Pill's name. Some more shit came out this morning, actually, that this one guy, Zeph, released all these audio leaks this morning of Kraut basically admitting to doxing, um, to doxing, on Kiwi Farms, Coach Red Pill's name. There were some pictures up there. There was a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure if they were trying to dox you, Baked Alaska, because I'm pretty sure your name was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a whole channel dedicated to my name, and I'm I'm a pretty tough guy. I've been, you know, the center of huge, high-profile uh, sort of malicious attacks. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to that. But the thing is, my family has personally been targeted. I've, you know, I'm in Alaska right now visiting my family and my nieces and nephews. And they were very attacked after Charlottesville. Uh, people were calling my parents' business and calling them Nazis and all that stuff. And they have nothing to do with what I do. Um, so I, I just was very concerned because it, it put my family through a ton of stress and was really unfair to them and that's what i'm concerned about and just seeing that there was a whole channel dedicated to you know messing with me fucking with me and that base mama and others were in this channel um that shows that there there is sort of a bias here and and, and i would like to point out too it seems like all the people that have been disinvited dis you, you know like sort, sort of disaffected from this event you know why are they all seem to be from the exact same sort of ideology like is that really a coincidence it I, might I, it might have been what is that idea might have been partially defensive oh uh razor fist yeah go ahead no 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 all i was all i was asking was what would that particular ideology be because i mean oh, it's just it's just right it seems to be right-wing people like more i guess more identitarian right-wing people yeah, but okay. that's a that's a broad spectrum too because like uh, just for anyone who doesn't realize, I know this, and I'm sure all of you know this, and most of the people watching probably do. But for anyone that doesn't, uh, the right wing spectrum is not. Hey, I'm a Nazi. It goes a little bit, you know, it's a little bit more complex than that. I know that's what you know, right wing watch wants to say, and CNN. Uh, but but uh, yeah, I mean, if uh, people were trying to dox you. Or fuck around with your family that definitely changes things in my metric if I find out that people at Kilroy were involved with that that changes things now uh, and and uh, razor fist I think you're still planning to go but I mean I've got to tell you man if that was the case I hope you would reconsider too uh, well yeah here's the thing like what 
all I've heard is they were on the server or like, first off, I'm the last person in the world you want to ask about Discord because I still don't have it, don't know how it works, don't. <laughs> so, like, I'm not sure how it works, but isn't it something in the effect of, like, you kind of belong to a server and you don't have to actually actively engage all the time? Like, you yeah. could you could it was belong a, to... No, it was a very small, selective server. It was literally, like, 20 people. It, it was a small group that was dedicated to this. And there was actually people bragging in there that they were doxing um, certain people that were lined up to speak or were on the uh, disinvited from Kilroy. Now, full blown Obviously, doxing, yeah. not just like a dossier stuff, like actual like doxing. Here's his phone uh, number. Here's his. It, it came up multiple times with multiple people. I, I can't speak to the effect of what uh, Baked Alaska was targeted with, but I'm doing a video on it. Uh, Base Mama is listed. Uh, she's listed under, uh, <laughs> they had fucking tags for like YouTube scientists and academics and investigators. It was some really gay shit. I saw that part, but the thing is like Discord's a foreign land to me. So, I, I mean, I just want somebody else who knows more about it to confirm, yeah, indeed, this is the person and they communicate. Like if, if someone was just on the server, but never actually did anything there, like they were invited and then everything else it, transpired, that, that's not enough for me. But if it was more than that, yeah, I'd, I'd, it definitely, wasn't, I'd it address wasn't, that uh, shit. It wasn't an open server. From my, my understanding is, uh, and I've only got a few screenshots of her relating to this, it was the private 24-hour operations uh, Discord, which was invite only. So this isn't like, oh, I went on because I'm a fan of Kraut and Tea. This was, oh, I've been invited into the inner circle kind of shit. Well, well may I just that's, clear that's one thing up? Uh, uh, Braving Ruin is the one who leaked everything because uh, he had someone in that Discord. And yes, it was an, an invite only Discord. Um, and he just uh, tweeted me this. I did not see docs or smearing on Baked Alaska yet, but there were attempts to smear and dox other people uh, and Baked was on the list just for clarification. And like I said, uh, there was a couple people who were doxed, but Baked, from what I saw through that footage, uh, the I sent you uh, sticks. Uh, yeah, bait. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there was no. Uh, yeah, nothing uh, happened to me. Not yet. I, yeah, I was me. I was just on the list, and I'm just speaking from previously being doxxed, having to move uh, my address, having to move, change my phone number, and having my family harassed. It just it was it just wasn't a pleasant feeling. I'm like, oh, okay, like that. Right? that. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I don't think anybody would enjoy seeing a whole channel with their name on it that's dedicated to doxing. So whether or not they went through with it, there was definitely some malicious intentions there and that that wasn't very cool. Uh, I would even when say I, a, a doxing aside, sorry, uh, j just doxing aside, like, let's just pretend that doxing isn't even part of this. Uh, based Mama just being on that server shows obvious bias against what you guys believe. Yeah. And then the fact that you were disinvited and not emailed back and Lauren and Faith Gold. Yeah, there, this wasn't like a mix of different people. This was all like sort of anti-alt-right people. And, yeah. And yeah. the people that were targeted were all either alt-right or there were a couple of random ones like Paul Joseph Watson. I can speak to that uh, in terms of her. Oh, I'm sorry. Go uh, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'll paste a, a, a screenshot on my Twitter regarding uh, Base Mama so you guys can take a look uh, if you're curious. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no problem. I can speak to that. Or I can speak to Base Mama's politics because in my experience, she's more of like a libertarian type uh, bordering on more of like a, a binary right wing kind of republic, at least in, in the few interactions that I've had with her. So I, I don't get the that's what what I find a little quizzical is the idea that like someone who I mean, I had initially tagged. I, I don't know that this is actually her politics. And admittedly, I'm assembling this from a very, very, very small sample of interactions. But um, I, I initially pegged her for more of like a just straight GOP kind of chick. And uh, then I kind of learned she's a little more on the libertarian side and whatever. So it, it's it doesn't something about that doesn't jive with me. The idea that she would like push people on the right out because I think she's more aligned with the right uh, in her personal politics. 
in my experience anyway. Uh, well, it might be really pragmatism is. too, you, you know, uh, literally defending the event against groups perceived of as bringing in fi like May literally yeah, fire. maybe a little bit of uh, overcompensation to stop uh, protests or you know a ship blizzard from kicking off. I don't know, but well, she seemed to really attack. I sticks. I would uh, ask if if you don't mind, you should check out the James Allsup video. He really covers the whole thing. He has all the screenshots. He talks about the doxing. He talks about um, his exchange with Base Mama. And like, I, I'm telling you like left wing people, right wing, centrist, whatever. Ha like I've heard from a lot of people that it just was like, she does not like James. She does not like me. It, it, it's, it, I don't think there's any speculation at this point. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, I can't speak to that because I spoke to her and had a good conversation. So I mean, I would vouch for that on my end. But that's just so why aren't we getting why aren't we getting emails back? Why aren't we? Why isn't she I, responding to us? See, I'm not an organizer. I can't. I can't really tell you that. Again, the uh, the re main thing for me is, hey, some of my fans have already bought into this stuff. What am I supposed to tell them? I I can't refund like 10 yeah. people each, like a grand. And at the same time, minimum. like if I go, maybe I can give them like, you know, I can do it to get strippers or something. <laughs> yeah, bare, <laughs> bare minimum, uh, you and you and I'll set up a pub or something or you know, we'll fucking. I, I would be down with that actually. Yeah. If there's an actual ball pit, I will show up. I just yeah. want to make that clear. I, I, pr <laughs> I promise you upon my honor, I will literally buy an inflatable ball pit and, <laughs> and a bunch of a bunch of strippers to gyrate around in it if it goes off, you know, with many hitches. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's funny? When I was talking to the organizers on their extreme, uh, I brought up the ball pit as a joke. And then uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, Sister Danger, I don't think she caught that it was a joke, but she's like, well, I'm pretty sure I have an inflatable pool and I could probably set that up. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, that was funny. I, and I got to I gotta say real quickly, uh, I, I want to say thank you, Andy, because Andy is fucking based and like he asked a lot of really uncomfortable questions to the organizers, which it seems like a lot of people have been afraid to confront about them because because honestly across the board everyone i've talked to in the beginning was really excited about this event like i was really excited to meet you sticks and andy and like bunty king is is my good homie and like we we want to hang out and like i think everyone has been like really excited about this event so honestly i i'm just disappointed that there have been these sort of issues and i like that there's varying opinions that people might you know really disagree with each other i think that's what makes for a great panel and that's what makes for a great free speech event and, and so that you know just to let you know sticks i had the best intentions and i mean i still would like to go if we could sort of work this out um but it, it just seems like i think there needs to be some sort of responsibility taken and i didn't see a lot of that in the stream like if base mama would have just been like you know what I've made some major mistakes and we're going to address those. Like that would make me feel a lot better. I think that would make my fans feel a lot better, but I didn't see a lot of responsibility uh, being taken. To, to you and your fans, I would say I'm, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that it goes off. Well, not being an organizer, which means all I can do is make suggestions and like set people up with contacts that I happen to have. If that works well, I would definitely vouch for having a presence of people that are considered to be Nazis by the lamestream media. Because at this point, I mean, come on, it's better than the alternative is like everything falls apart anyway. Who cares if it gets attacked by the far left? It's probably it's going always going to gonna anyway. get attacked. Yeah, Antifa will probably show up. I, I warned of this, I think, almost a week ago. I said, "Hey, we've got to be. Uh, we got to understand that, regardless, eh, it's probably going to have protests and stuff. So why not?" Yeah, and well, and especially at a free speech event, you shouldn't be cowering towards, "Oh, what's going to happen? You know, who's going to protest or who's going to be upset?" Like, in, in fact, you actually like if people aren't upset about um, a free speech event where you're trying to stretch the boundaries of what can be said. Uh, and talked about and discussed uh, peacefully, then you know maybe it's not a free speech event in the first place. Maybe that is the whole 
problem with this whole event is maybe it should not have been called a free speech event. Call it a uh, Kilroy edgy skeptic event. You know, call it whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but but well, when then, you then when I you call it a free speech go. event, yeah, I mean? couldn't go then because I'm not really a skeptic. I'm just <laughs> uh, I'm just me. Well, okay, I, I, I'm joking a little there, but what I mean is when you say the words free speech event, and I don't think Base Mama really knows you know the weight of those words it, it's a serious topic i mean people have been you know milo and there's been so many people that have literally been uh ben shapiro that have been attacked and like chased down me in charlottesville i got you know sprayed in the face by antifa almost blinded you know so like free speech is is a very uh serious thing and i I think you can't like throw that term around and say, oh, we're free speech and then be like, oh, we don't really like that panel. We don't like that idea. Yeah. Don't talk about identity politics. Don't talk. You know, so you, you got to choose one or the other. If you just want to have an event with a bunch of cool speakers and content creators like VidCon, then yeah, sure. You can you can throw people out. You, you, you can make different decisions. But when you're making it about free speech and then you're sort of censoring or banning, disinviting, whatever you want to call it, scheduling issues uh, for people that don't seem to be the safe topics, then I see that as a big problem. May I ask you a question? Um, yeah. Let's just say, because uh, Sister Danger at the end of that stream uh, was, you know, she, like she's really pissed off and upset about this, obviously. And, and I suggested that, because she's like, how would we fix this? How can we fix this? And I'm like, I'm just an observer, but you have to go and speak to all the people that obviously have had concerns for a long time now and that you haven't addressed. Do you think that if you were to talk to them uh, that you would want to maybe figure something out? Well, um, I, did, well I did send her an email because she, she, said, she said to all those who have been uh, you know, disinvited or whatever, please send me an email. So I did send her an email. Um, so I'll see if she responds to that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm all for making resolutions. I'm all, all for making, uh, making things work. I mean, it's hard to erase. Like I do have a bad taste in my mouth. Definitely. Like I can't sort of, you know, uh, forget some of the things that happened and, and how some of the things were handled, but I, I will give some grace in the fact that yes, this is their first event they're putting together and all that. And if they're willing to work with me and maybe work with James and it sounds like, um, you know, Derek said that they would allow that uh, identitarian panel on. So uh, if they would allow that and allow us to be back, I mean, you know, they, they say scheduling issues. I, I'll I'll just be the guy that I'll be the MC at the identitarian you know panel. I I, I don't need like some major uh, spot. And by the way, to make it clear too, I was not offered any money. I was not offered uh, accommodations or airfare. I I was um, under the impression that I was paying for all this myself. So so there's nothing I'm making off this. I just thought this was a great way to network. Uh, with other people and get some ideas out there and and, and see some of y'all so yeah if we can work this out in a peaceful fun way i'm totally down to uh get this all back together yeah yeah i can see that that's that would be definitely like the preferred thing would be uh for people who are independent content creators uh, it's a good example it's a good way for them to put themselves out there it's good for the conference the event uh, and it's good. I think for, it's good for other people too, because we get to meet all uh, one another as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I was very excited in why I still want, like, whether I go to Kilroy, like in the building or not, I'm still going because I feel like I have to, obviously, and I want to to meet everyone, um, and obviously the people who paid to see me. Because, like you said, baked, I have people. You know, DMing me, they pay two fifty for that VIP party thing, and they feel ripped off. And you know, like that's yeah. I feel yeah. fucking horrible about that. Um, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might all, all almost be worth like relaunching the guest lineup. <laughs> no, Kilroy two point oh. I'm now, a now with a ball pit. Because I felt like, and I, I think Base Mom more or less admitted this in one of those videos, I forget which one, uh, that they they funded it like almost too fast. So they had to start booking guests too fast. 
Like, I mean, look, this thing doesn't even happen till what, April? So, like, you know, they, they were kind of ahead of the curve on that. I think they just moved too fast and fucked up in a lot of ways. Regardless, you know, they, there was any discrimination. Depend well, you know. th that's the other thing, too, is that it's six months away and it's a two-day event and you're trying to tell me that there's scheduling issues and, um, you know, I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but I'm just saying I looked at some of the other speakers and there were speakers added after me. And many of them had significantly less uh, of a fan base. I didn't know who many of those people are, um, and you know may maybe they are cool people, and and that's that's fine. But um, you know, I was added before people, and you would think they would have priority, like Andy was saying earlier, on some of the bigger names that that uh, brought out some of the uh, big donations that I, I, I know several, several of my fans who bought the VIP tickets 250 because they wanted to meet me and hang out with me. And that was and I was really pushing the event and all that. And my, you know, it, I, I mean, the bottom line here is you cannot put someone's face on a uh, event where you're purchasing $250 tickets and then take that person's face off. You cannot promote them and, and and just be like oh never mind they're not there that is the i think core issue of the mistakes that happened yeah mm. that's definitely been a problem uh but now the guest list actually is completely empty right now uh, i'm hoping it gets recompiled i would like to know who is definitely going who is probably going and who has dropped out like that the, my biggest concern is hey is it sustainable uh, should I be contacting other people? Like, is there a huge vacuum now? And should I be getting like maybe a couple people in smaller creators, all tech aboard, something like that? I'm actually, because I want to help the uh, Kilroy event do well, not even having the benefit of being an organizer. Uh, but I can definitely understand why people have concerns. Anyone discrediting them and saying, well, you know, it's a bad person because they have concerns. They're not 100% on board. It's like, oh, damn, what do you expect, dude? At this point, it's uh, kind of an eight. Yeah. I, I can say for my part, I'll, I mean, it's in my neighborhood. Uh, I'll, I'll be going. I, I could take a long walk and wind up there by accident. So... I don't actually I shouldn't say that the city is so fucking huge. Um, but anyway. Yeah, see, that's why I'm I'm inclined to show up. Just we got to prove that we're not one another because everyone still thinks that it's <laughs> impossible. I tell you. First, we have to set up the containment field, I think. But, uh, well, this, I noticed you two are never talking at the same time. This is <laughs> we're trying to talk <laughs> over each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah no I I would love to I would love to go and and hopefully be able to uh, speak on internet censorship because that's uh, affected me and uh, I, I, I the biggest part about this I I honestly could care less about speaking uh, I I was more excited to hang out with all the other content creators and sort of shoot the shit and just like get to know some people network uh, with some people that I, ha I haven't met yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's By the way, uh, Medicare, you haven't talked in like half an hour, dude. Are you asleep? Uh, no, no. I just, I just didn't want to interrupt. I guess I, I, I'm outside the pack on this. I, I, I don't know. I mean, you all are way too forgiving. It feels like you're used as a commodity to raise money, and then some of your concerns were pushed aside once the the goal was hit. And it feels like cucking out to say that, like. <sighs> You know, certain certain viewpoints are going to bring in dumb people that are going to criticize us for having them there. Well, I mean, are you going to kneel down to the lowest common denominator when it comes to free speech? Like, I can't associate with this person because it's, it, it, you know, some dumb motherfucker is going to think that they're a white nationalist. So I can't, I can't talk to them. I mean, that's the same shit Peterson said about Faith Goldie. See, if you I, believe, I can... if you believe in the principles of free speech, you can't be afraid of the pushback you get when you hold an event and let people talk about things. I, yeah. I get with that, but you're also ascribing motive that we haven't confirmed. Well, well, like the... All, no, all no, the I was directly addressing... Things. Wait, wait, I, I was directly addressing Sticks when he had said that... Oh, okay. Um, you know, maybe one of the reasons is you get, you're going to get people that are just uneducated or they're going to see the 
the topics that are discussed or the people that are showing up. I gotcha. And and they're going no, to no, no, my man. That's that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that any uh, anyone is uneducated. I'm just saying that it might be a lightning rod for problems. Look, I've got a track record of not really caring. Like I'll talk to anyone. I don't really care. I don't care if they're a literal Nazi. Like they literally call themselves one. I'm still going to talk to them. I don't care if Right Wing Watch has a problem with it. I don't fucking care if MSNBC has a problem with it. But if you're organizing a conference where, you know, you have to supply security and there's maybe legal concerns, I can kind of understand. I, I, I personally, if I were organizing it, I wouldn't give a fuck. And I would just say, well, anyone can show up. We'll try to schedule what we can. And I would work with people as closely as possible. But, but for people who have never done it, and who are maybe more, maybe more centrist and concerned about the legal equation, I can kind of understand where they're coming from. I just think that they've overreacted slightly. Uh, and I'm trying, I'm working actively to try to address that myself. Like now, now that Cullen's gone, you know, we're going to need people, uh, you know, actual dedicated content creators, I think, to be like, hey, you know, here's an idea. Here's how to make Kilroy better. Here's how you could make it more shitty and you should avoid this. Uh, as opposed to simply saying, ah, ha, ha, Kilroy is going to die. It's a, like shitty. Uh, and, and then reveling in it, I would rather say, hey, instead of having it be shitty, how can we make it be a, a working thing for free speech? That's my main concern because it's that. Free speech, number one, and also my subscribers, I would say. But uh, so on to what Medicare just said, because they asked me at the end, would there be a way that we can talk this out and stuff? Because I still want to go to meet all of you and meet uh, the viewers and stuff. <clears throat> but the amount of of dicking around that I've I've had to I have to be put through with based mama and uh, the uh, the whole situation basically, it's almost like now that they've been caught in this in this situation. And now they want to rectify it. Everyone calls them out now. I get what you're saying is how can we make it better? But once we see the true colors of what was happening, is is it forgivable? You know what I mean? Yeah, see, I can understand that because, I mean, you were maybe you feel screwed over. So I can't speak to that because I'm not in your same position. So I'll just defer to you uh, on such a thing. And, but again... If it can be improved, if, if, if it can be stabilized at all and people can come back aboard, like I know some people have dropped out, but like Baked Alaska, you see you'd love to be aboard. If, if it would welcome you there or Worski or anybody else, I would love that because I want I'm just a content creator. As far as I'm concerned, this is a chance to meet other content creators and to meet fans. It has nothing to do with, hey, it's some great overarching plan of, the, the biggest content creators, the biggest all tech names. No, I just want to meet a bunch of people. I, I don't really care if it's a bunch of speaking panels or what it form it actually takes. Yeah. I, I can understand um, boycotting on the basis of being dicked around. That I get. The the idea that uh, here's, here's where I, I think they part company with reality a little bit is when the same people who complain that Kilroy isn't about free speech go to VidCon every year. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. But, but with VidCon, it's a whole different thing. It's I'm going there because I just know a bunch of my friends are there. We honestly saw one, or uh, I think two panels. It was the Anita panel and the Franny panel. And, and just to, to criticize it after. And it was just mainly meeting viewers and then partying that's all vidcon was and i i think with the kilroy thing it was about going there and speaking our minds and doing the panels that we want to do yeah so i think there's a big difference between kilroy and vidcon vidcon is more VidCon was not, uh called a you know it was not called vid free speech con you know the 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 point of vidcon is literal uh all, it's like an all ages YouTube sort of event. Um, it, it can't really be compared to Kilroy, but I, I definitely do agree with uh, Base Jim over there, uh, Medicare. And I, I gotta say, Mister Medicare, you have an incredible army. That the amount 
of times I saw the name Jim in that last live stream was very impressive and I was laughing pretty hard. Uh, but no, I, I agree with you, Medicare. Like, like we, we have been pretty cucked or pretty screwed over and it, it really does not deserve forgiveness. And oh, I, I will, I'll, I'll tell you this. I will never like based mama. I think she is a cunt. I will say that because it, I, it's free speech, but I will for my fans go and speak at the event or go be a part of the event for my fans, not for base mama. So I would agree with you, Medicare. They're, they're, you know, when you see someone, you know, lie to your face so many times and then, you know, you see it, them do it to your friends and your other friends and your other friends. It's like, okay, you know, I don't really trust this person. Um, and that's fine. But I, I would go, just for my fans and for the people that want to meet me because some people honestly were buying tickets internationally. People were buying tickets from around the world uh, to meet, even if it's, you know, 10 people, whatever it may be at the end result. I, I don't want to, like Sticks was saying, you know, it would be a shame to like let people down that, you know, traveled all this way or made accommodations just to like hang out with some of their favorite creators. How about bar hopping? That's what I'm going to be doing with everyone. Okay. Yeah, I, it can always, it can always be like that too. You can always have like a sub conference, basically. Yeah, yeah. Just well, stand that, on the table and start yapping. Okay. So, by the way, uh, this is actually what started to happen, Sticks, is that we started to, um, the people that were disinvited sort of started to make these meetups. And that's when the whole contract came into play because they, I think they got wind that. We were like, okay, we don't really know what's going on. We're getting disinvited. So we started making our own like little meetup around the same area. And then they dropped this whole like non-compete, uh, non-disclosure contract. So they clearly didn't want people to have meetups. Yeah, I, th I think that that was definitely a worry. I, I can't really defend that, but I think that was dropped, wasn't it? Because Cullen alluded to that being dropped completely, if I remember correctly. I think, I think they uh, they like backed out a little bit and they said some people need to sign and some people don't. And when Derek asked them, what if you don't sign, will you be allowed to speak? And the answer was a three second pause and then maybe. Sketchy. I, I think it was <laughs> Am I am I full of shit or was it like your your spot is guaranteed if you sign the contract? If you don't, then you know it's first come first serve. Here we'll just lay out the fucking trough, and you can. <laughs> yeah, pretty. See, much. see if it's like that, then I have a I have a problem with that. If it's like that, it sounds like favorite there shouldn't be to, there shouldn't be separate classes of people at a free speech event. In all honesty. Yeah, like it sounds to me that there's favoritism to certain people who are speaking. So like what puts you in a tier where you don't have to sign? What puts you in a tier where you only have to sign one of them? And what people need to sign no matter what? You know what I mean? And then that way, and with that, going back to the server, now we have the organizer obviously against the right or the far right or whatever you want to say and calling the shots on who signs what and what tier they're in and that's biased like that's not that's not cool right yeah by the way uh in chat i think Brittany venti is there uh, i can confirm Brittany venti has not uh decided to be a stripper at the kilroy event uh. just so people just so people are aware i don't think she's signed on for that okay i'm definitely not heading Hundred percent. Like that's just the last nail in the coffin. If Brittany Venti is not stripping, I, I will not be going to Kilroy. I'm sorry. Why is this bitch named after a frappuccino? <laughs> hey, hey, you gotta respect women around here, dude. Hey, everyone's asking for Jim. They want they want the stone cold truth from Jim. The stone cold truth from Jim. Well, lay it out. Mama Base Mama said it in the stream she just did with some uh, black guy in Morski. You want to talk about, I mean, you, you guys had said there shouldn't be different tiers for different people at a speaking event. Uh, what did she say? She said, everybody is getting compensated in some way. That's a lie. Mm. We already know that's a lie. Andy isn't yeah. getting compensated. She yeah. said that the contracts were negotiable. Some people signed them. Some people didn't. If you signed the contract, you'd be promoted. If you didn't sign the contract, 
we can't associate with you. I mean, sure, maybe we'll let you speak, but we can't say your name because you're you're a fucking scarlet letter to us. But that's that's her own explanation about this shit. Yeah, and there was no compensation uh, offered to me, and I want to say who, but other speakers with a lot of subs who I, I was DMing with, and then I got wind of uh, people who aren't even YouTubers. It's just like ra uh, random academics or scientists or whatever who were being paid. So then that means to me is all of us threw out a, pro uh, a, a promotion out there our people donate they grab that money and use that to fund other speakers that's kind of fucked up and now i hear today we're compensating everyone i'm like <laughs> what are you no that's not true i was like yelling in chat lies lies before i was on because that's a complete lie, complete yeah there were there were a lot of lies said today like a lot and I think a lot of people just don't really know what to trust at this point. Mm -hmm. Right, Jim? This is like a fire festival all over again. Jesus. Uh, well, yeah, I, I sympathize for you guys because it sounds like every one of you is saying the same thing. Like, so, I mean, some of you find it shady. Some of you think it might just be, you know, it's their first time at the rodeo, but it seems like everybody, at least from what I'm hearing in this particular chat, is thinking about the people that were showing up, you know, to meet them. And the responsibility they have to them like i heard that from Worski, i heard that from sticks i'm sure razor's the same i'm sure alaska's the same too i mean people want to come and meet you or greet you or you know do whatever you guys do at these fucking events i don't know i don't do them but um <laughs> you know i'm straight what can i say but yeah, they want to come to these fucking events and meet you guys and you feel like you have an obligation to them so i get it it's like a rock in a hard place whether you think it's malice or just ineptitude or the first time they're doing it you guys are kind of stuck in an awkward position. I just I've, 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 got a, I, I've got a way in here because I, at some point here, I need to end this stream because I mean, sure. how long has it gone on? But oh, okay. uh, I, I'm I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and at least talk to the people that are attempting to organize this hmm. myself. Uh, I have not at this time signed my actual contract. My hesitance with not going is mainly subscriber related. It, it doesn't really have anything to do with any further loyalty. Uh, I will say this though, it is true, I can confirm this, that the personal contracts come after like the NDA stuff. Uh, and I'm like, well, uh, what's the point of that? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but uh, I thought you could go around and uh, if you all uh, wanted to weigh in like one last time here on this stream, uh, it'd probably be a good idea, and I'll I'll mute my microphone so you can definitely uh, you know do what you need to do. Anyone first? No, you're me? first. Uh, Andy. Sure, sure. All right. Um, I honestly, from from the get go, with everything that happened initially, I've I've had a really bad feeling with certain things. Basically, everything I've brought up, and some other things, and Chris, the buddy I film with. Uh, he pulled out a few weeks ago from being un uncomfortable with all the all the things that have been happening, and then James Allsup Allsup's video was like the reason I was like, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this. Uh, I do feel a responsibility to see my my viewers who have paid, so I I will go uh, at least to meet them and do bar hopping. And anyone who's under 21 will like have lunch or just chill out or whatever, do whatever. So. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, this has turned into a massive dumpster fire and, uh, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. It's in April. Anything can happen between now and April. So we'll have to see, you know, that's all I can say really. Yeah. Um, I guess I would say, uh, yeah, it, it definitely is a dumpster fire. I mean, I, I question if this event is even going to happen. I, I think it might not even happen, to be honest, because we're just like, I was talking about these things and I know Faith Goldie and James and some others were talking about these things. Even Mr. Medicare on Twitter was saying a bunch and, uh, you know, they're just now coming to light. And a lot of the people who have bought in are just seeing some of these issues, but 
Uh, this is only the tip of the iceberg as far as the problems I've had with the organizers, and it, it's been really, really bad. And and I don't, uh, you know, knock anyone for inexperience or like doing their event the first time, but I do knock them when they are incredibly dishonest and uh, repeatedly uh, lie to your face and and, and just they're just they've just been super ingenuous to me and i don't appreciate that and, and and i i thought it might only be with me and then i saw the exact same pattern with james and with faith um so so to me yeah it, it's it's not leaving a good taste in my mouth but i definitely want to uh show up and uh at least uh hang out with the fans and hang out with some of you guys out there so hopefully i'll see see y'all out there if it if it if it happens mm. Uh, Billy, Billy, Jim, Billy, Jim. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. My mic, uh, my mic was muted. I, I, yeah. my, yeah, I, I, from my opinion, I'm, I'm an outsider on this, so I'm not a person that's going as a guest or as a speaker. Um, <laughs> some of you know me, so you know what my interest in this would be. I find it funny. Um, so I'm probably not the most uh, down to earth person to get a real opinion on this. I'm I'm just telling you what it looks like from an outside perspective. Maybe it's paranoia. Maybe I'm you know ascribing too malicious of a, a motivation to these people. Uh, but it just you know that that's why I'm kind of falling back on the default position of it. it just it feels like Dashcon, and I don't mean that. And that it's just a bunch of like you're going to go to fucking Kilroy and Sargon's going to be swimming around a ball pit. What I mean is it's just, it, it just seems like it's a lot of similar issues. Like the administration really did have issues, how they handled their money, how they spent it, who they had as guest speakers, where the venue was. And it just, it feels kind of like that to me. So maybe you're right. Maybe it's just their first time and they're having difficulties with it. But I, I don't know. I'm laughing. So I'm happy. I think you need to show up, Jim. You're, you're the most requested guest of all time. Never go into one of these fucking things. I agree. <laughs> I agree with what Razor said. The VidCon thing. What are you fucking people doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, can I just add, um, uh, if you guys are apprehensive to understand or or to know like what the whole doxing situation is, a lot of shit has been leaked this morning, and there's a few people that I really need to call out, and I'll be streaming about that later, showing all the leaked audio. And JF and V are gonna hop on, and maybe some other other people too. And there's a lot of unforgivable actions that certain people have done, and it has to do with that server, which is also just piling on to this whole Kilroy thing. Uh, so I want to say that, and I, I would yeah, do. Yeah. And shout out to Braving Ruin for uh, uncovering all of that, by the way. Ruin, yeah. Yes, fucked up. Uh, Razor, Razor, you got to give your like outro here too, my man. <laughs> my feeling is just, I, I think you unanimously, regardless of which direction you're coming at this from, whether you ascribe malicious intent to it or mere incompetence, I, you know, I think the overarching impression we can all form is like they just need to get better with conveying their overall messaging. Right. Like, I think this is an object lesson in not everybody being cut out for every job. Like, maybe they should just be the idea people and delegate. You know, they could am ameliorate the mountain goat fuck by just delegating a sort of point man for messaging and maybe organizing the guest list. You know what I mean? Have, have other people who are a little more experienced at that shit uh, organize it. But yeah, e even if regardless of which direction you come at it from i think period they just need somebody out there with a megaphone actually holding the call consistently and not being ambiguous and saying a different thing behind your back than they are you know out front that's that's just my overall feeling of it yeah this this was definitely a good conversation though we do have to have conversations about this because if if nobody raises objections nothing's going to improve uh, by the way, a uh, big thank you to Warski, to Baked Alaska and Razor. This is the first time I've actually talked to any of you on audio. And a Medicare, I think this is the second time that we've spoken. Uh, so huge thanks for you for coming on the stream, guys. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having me. Thanks. All right. I think I'm going to end it here uh, for everybody, but that's about all. And maybe uh, everyone else can say peace out.
Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Inshallah. Spoon clock. <laughs>